So you understand, you know, it, it doesn't matter what social position, social status, position on the company, we can all easily fall victim to fraud, fall victim to deception. So the things that we want to try to focus on while we're together. First of all, we're going to look at the analysis of myths. What are the myths of deception? We miss, as I mentioned, about 50% of the lives that happen in front of us. And we miss for several reasons. There's a, a study that's been replicated several times. It includes law enforcement personnel, intelligence, and school teachers, and so forth. They take a room, for example, and take 50 people, 25 investigators, 25 from general civilian population. They had them sit down and look at some video. So now, is this, is this guy lying or not? Who was better at spotting deception? Neither one. They missed about 50%. So they said, you know, that's pretty bad. Investigators, they're supposed to be good at this. That's their job, interviewing people, studying credibility. So they reset the experiment. They had people who had 40 years old and older, then investigators who had 20 plus years experience, set them down, had them watch video. Who performed better at spotting the deception? Neither one. They missed 50%. Judges perform no better than the general population at spotting when somebody's lying to them. Lawyers don't. Doctors don't, therapists, psychologists, ministers, parents, children, men, women, media, nobody as a group gets better than 50%, except one group. You want to take a shot or guess who that group was? Nope. Children. Not moms, not children. I'll show you some data and research that shows this basic change of a narrative-oriented conversation will increase the information that you get from someone by 60%. Anybody interested in hearing how to do that? It's simple. It's simple. 60% more detail in just the way we approach the conversation. Then we're going to finish up looking at the reliable cues. And it's basically not some of the same cues that you've thought of. It's not the cues that you think are common to deception. Now, four-phase interview, four-part narrative interview. This is where we're going to, what I call data mine. How much information can I elicit from a victim, from a witness, as well as someone I suspect withholding information. Or perhaps you want to settle a disagreement within your employees. Perhaps it's a customer complaint coming in your, on your customer complaint line or ombudsman for the company. Maybe it's a negotiations situation. But this four-part interview has shown to increase that ability and to maintain cooperation from a victim or witness who's got information that you need critical to make a viable decision. So each phase has got a different goal. The first objective is we're going to do an orientation. Now we'll break this down a little bit in detail for you. We'll break it down into. Now what are the signs of deception? Tell you what, let's do a little quiz. I want you to call out for me, and you don't have to raise your hand, just call out for me. Uh, what are, give me five body language signs of lying that you've heard. What are body language signs of lying that you look for or you think of signs that somebody's being untruthful with you? Just, just call them out. Yeah, looking, away. looking away. Okay. Do what? Changing voice. St uh, let's, let's do body first. Yeah. Just do the body. Do what? Uh, 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 Twitching the nose. Twitching. Touching the face. Give me one more body language cue. Huh? Blinking the eyes. Uh, blinking the eyes a lot. Okay. Give me five verbal signs that somebody's lying. Stuttering. Uh, uh, Arms and nose. Pardon me? Laugh. Nervous laugh. Uh, high pitch in the voice. I'm sorry, what was the other one? Higher volume. Uh, higher volume, higher modulation. Okay. Out of out of those ten, how many did you get right? One. You got one. Don't feel bad. I do this every week for, with law enforcement, intelligence folks. They don't do much better. And because a lot of it's myth, it's been passed around and perpetuated. And that's what I've been studying and looking at some of the training it's amazing some of the things that we teach or are the myths that perpetuate our societies is signs of deception. Would you like to know what some of those signs are? Yeah. Like okay, tell you what. If you come back from a 15-minute break, <laughs> we're going to look at what are the reliable signs of deception, how we can pick those out. We're going to look at the voice cues and body cues and give you a few more examples, looking at Tony again and watch some of his cues and see if you can do a better job at picking up deception. And the key is... You're working too hard. 